This is the walkthrough for the hazard mapping practical and here you can see an outline of Washington state in the US. The yellow square outlines the study area around Mount Rainier so we'll just zoom in on that and focus there. The first thing that we're going to do is switch on the streams layer which is under the table of contents called NHD major streams. We switch that one on and what we're really interested in is which ones will be affected by the Lajas which you can see in purple there's smaller ones in white and then the kind of hashed pattern as well. So to find that out we need to use the clip tool. So to use that we have to go to geoprocessing and then clip. The input feature is the one that's being clipped so that's going to be the streams. That's under the geodatabase file here, major streams and the clip features are the features that are being they're being clipped to so it's going to be the Laha so Laha data and f layer files so we'll start with case 3 which is the smallest click add then the output feature class is basically where you name the feature that we're creating so there's already a file called output files within the data so just open that one and you can put class 3 streams clip press save and then you don't need to change anything else so just press OK and wait for that one to finish. Okay once that's done the next step was to repeat that for both of the other situations so I'll just go through that quickly. Once that's finished, you'll have three new clip layers in the table of contents, and then those will each correspond with the Laha occurrences down here. So to find out which streams will be affected by each circumstance, you need to go to the attributes table for each one. So we'll go to the class one first and open the attribute table. That brings up lots of data and then the column that we're interested in is the GNIS name and these are in numerical order right now so we can change it to alphabetical by right clicking at the top of the column and clicking either sorting ascending or descending. So there's a few that don't have names here and then you get down to Carbon River, Clearwater River etc. And you can see at the bottom here the total which in this case is 2210 affected by the largest Laha situation. Um, so that's the answer to that question. The next step is to create a buffer around Mount Rainier to see which areas will be affected by Tephra fallout. So we can do that by going to geoprocessing and clicking on buffer. The input feature is going to be Mount Rainier because that's the feature that we want the buffer around. So back in the project folder, that's the layer file called Mount Rainier. Click Add, and the output feature class is just where we name what the buffer is. So it's going to be buffer 10 kilometers to start. So the linear unit is going to be 10, but we want to change the units to kilometers, not feet. Then we don't need to change anything else, so just press OK. And that brings up a circle with Mount Rainier at the center um, with a 10 kilometer radius. Then we do the same thing for 50 kilometers. So the input feature class, Mount Rainier again. And then we can just change that name to 50k. Make sure we change that to 50 kilometers. Press OK. And then you can see a much larger circle around it there. So you can make it easier to see by moving the 10 kilometer one above. And the next step is to find out the area of these two circles, which you could do using maths, but we don't need to because we've got GIS. So to do that, open the attributes table, and we need to add a new field here. So we open the table options drop down menu and click add field. Then we have to name it. So we'll just name it area because that's what we're calling it. We'll keep this a short integer or you can change it to long integer, it doesn't really matter in this case. Then just press OK. And then to calculate the area you need to right click on the new field that you've created, 
click on calculate geometry it'll give you a warning that you're doing calculations outside an edit ses session and that just means that you can't undo the changes but we don't need to so that's okay just click yes and the property we want is area and yep we use the same coordinate system and we want our units in square kilometers not square feet and click OK. It's the same warning again but that's fine so we just click yes then it gives us the area is 314 square kilometers so that's the area of the 10 kilometer buffer and we can do that 50 kilometers as well create a new field again we'll just call that area calculate geometry just change that to square kilometers and OK. The area of this one is much larger. You can see 7,854 square kilometers. So the next step is to find out which populated places will be affected by the Tefra fallout and the Lahaz. I'll just go through it for the Tefra fallout for now. So we'll switch on the populated places. And then we're going to do the same thing as before. Use the clip tool to find out which ones will be affected just in these areas. So we'll go to geoprocessing and clip. The input feature this time is going to be populated places. That's pop places shapefile, the one at the bottom. Add that one. Then the clip feature is going to be our buffer. So we'll start with a 10 kilometer buffer. Add that and then create a name for it again. Pop places buffer. And then, OK. And then we'll do the same thing for 50 kilometers. Populated places shapefile. And then we're clipping it to 50 kilometer buffer. We'll just change this one again. Save. OK. And then if we switch off the populated places layer, we still got our features within the buffer. To find out the number of populated places affected, we go about it the same way as for the streams. So right click on the layer in the table of contents, open the attributes table, and you can see within the 50 kilometer buffer, there are 77 populated places that will be affected by Tefra fallout. The handout says to repeat that for all of the different Laha areas, which you can do on your own. I'm not gonna go through that now. We're going to move on to the next step and have a look at the parcels at risk. So we'll switch off the populated places, buffers, we'll switch off streams and the two buffers there just to keep things tidy. And we'll switch on parcels at risk. So this shows the outline of individual properties. If you zoom right in, then you can see such features here. These will be roads and the outlines of people's properties. Once again, we're going to use the clip tool to find out which ones will be affected by the Laha situations. So back to geoprocessing and clip. This time the input features are going to be the parcels at risk. So they're in Laha data, layer files, and then Laha parcel in the middle. So add that one and then the clip features are going to be case one, that's the largest Laha case. We'll add that one then give it a name and OK. And that's highlighted the parcels that will be at risk from the largest Laha. So we can switch off the others. And this question was to find out the different kinds of parcels that will be affected by this. So you could do that by going to the table of attributes but we're going to look at a different way so right click again on the new layer that you've just created and go to properties then we're going to change the symbology and then we'll change it to show instead of one color for all of the features we'll change it to a different colors for different categories so we'll keep it as categories and unique fields and then we'll change this to code description and go add all values and here you can see you've got headings and code descriptions and then you've got the count of each one down this side. So this will tell you how many of each different kind of
property would be affected. The final step for the practical is to create a map layout to show all of the different information. So I'm just going to go through the basics of that now. So to go to layout view instead of data view, the button is just at the bottom of the data frame here. So you click that and it gives you an A4 outline with your map on it somewhere. There are different ways to move the map around. Using the black arrow here will enable you to resize the image on the page. And then zooming in and out here will zoom in and out on the page. But if you want to zoom in and out or move around the features that you'll see on the map, to select the pan button here and then you'll be able to move around the map as you do in the data frame. To zoom in and out you need to use the functions up here and click where you want to zoom. To add map features like a north arrow or scale bar you need to go to insert. So let's just add a north arrow, choose one that's appropriate and put it wherever you want on the map and then you can make it larger or smaller as you wish and then we'll go for a scale bar so pick any one really let's go for alternating you can change the property straight away so the first thing you need to change is miles into kilometers and then because the program was written in the US we need to change it to the correct spelling which is RES instead of ERS OK and OK and then that will appear in the middle and then you can just click and drag that to where you need it and if you enlarge the scale bar it will increase the scale so it goes up to 80 kilometers so you choose something that's suitable and then to add a legend go back to insert find legend and then the legend items box is everything that will appear on the key so you only really need to have the things that you want to show in the legend items so we'll keep Mount Rainier keep parcel clip you can change the name afterwards study area and the streams are still switched on so we'll keep those and then you can change the number of columns so one column or spread it over two columns then this lets you add a title for the legend or you can just delete that and it won't show anything you can change the border and background here but often you won't need to just click finish so that appears right in the middle so we'll need to make our map a bit smaller and you can just click and drag everything around as you like and you can move the key wherever you like make it larger or smaller and then usually as you switch on or switch off layers they'll appear and disappear from the key. You can spend quite a long time playing around with the settings and the final thing that you want to do is export the map. So you go to file, export, find the folder where you want to save it, give it a name, then you can change the file type here usually a JPEG or a PNG is the best with JPEG you want to change your resolution to usually a minimum of 300 anything less than that and it might become pixelated and then you can choose to clip the output to graphics extent which means that any of the extra white areas around the page would not show clipping it to the graphics extent would mean that the edge of the picture is the edge of the map so we'll do that and then click save Once that's finished, you can open your folder and open the file here. So that brings us to the end of the practical. Don't forget to have a go at the questions on the handout and on the quiz on Blackboard if you can. And have a go at some of the other practicals as well.